Hello, anyone and everyone, I am Echo, and today we are exploring abduction. Um, we're here outside of who I presume to be C.W.'s house, the guy who we presumably have to be careful about because Farley says he's a bad one, maybe, sort of. I actually, um, in between this episode and last episode, I looked back uh, at my earlier uh, the, the very first episode that I uploaded, and uh, Farley doesn't actually outright say CW's a bad guy. The exact way she words it is, um, it's dangerous there, be careful who you trust, CW might be there, I don't know. That's what she said, and that obviously strongly implies that CW is someone we should maybe not trust, and therefore, um... There would be, you know, good reason to think he's a bad guy, but it doesn't necessarily mean she's outright saying he's not a good guy. And actually, if that's Farley's house, and if that's CW's house, assuming that's actually his house, maybe he just moved into there. Um, uh, you know, and again, assuming that is, well, well we know, actually, I'm sorry, I, I mixed that up. Assuming that is CW's house, because that's where we saw, like, the power lines were connected to, but the power lines might be, um, or, or, but he might not be CW, he might be somebody else who moved into CW's house, is what I'm trying to say, I'm sorry, I got all confused. But anyway, um, it, it it's, it, fuck, now I lost my point. Oh, jeez. Now, basically, it's, uh, it, it's, 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 he might be trustworthy or maybe not or whatever and i still don't know i talked about it at the end of the last episode too and we don't know if we can actually trust farley we kind of assume we can because she was the narrator but besides that we don't have any reason to actually trust her also um in between this episode and the last so to give you guys a small little something of insight into the recording process i normally record uh videos one day Every week, I record a couple videos at once and then upload them and everything like that. And um, so normally what this means is that I have to wait a week uh, in between each recording session. And when there's a game like, for example, Abduction, where I'm very excited about and I really want to play it a lot, um, I can't play it because if I played it, I would either progress past the point in the game, which if I'm trying to do a blind playthrough would be very bad, uh, or I might actually burn out on the game, which, uh, in this case, I don't think would be very likely, but it, it'd be possible, you know, um, and that also wouldn't be good. Um, but I did actually, in order to try to, like, tide myself over until my next recording session, I ended up actually looking up and watching a uh, pre-release preview of the game, just to try and, like, uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of... It, it was it was more of, like, a making-of type thing where the developers were explaining some of the uh, some of their ideas for, like, puzzles and stuff like that. And, uh, unfortunately, in that pre-release thing, they sort of spoiled one thing that I ended up missing with this uh, lantern here. Where, uh, apparently... Now, in 99% of all video games ever, you cannot pick up objects and actually interact with them by, like, turning them around and looking at them like this. Um, but even in games that do let you pick up objects and turn them around and manipulate them like this, you can't usually do much with them outside of just, you know, looking at them and turning them around. But in this game, apparently, they've gone and made a big deal about the fact that, uh, sometimes... Do it. Do it. It worked in the thing. Oh, that's weird. It's not working now. Huh. Okay. I guess that was only for the preview thing. Because in, uh, in the preview, what the dude developer did was that he turned on or turned off the lamp and then he screwed the top off. That top part right there. It screwed off. And, uh... He opened it up and there was a little container inside that had a note in it. And I did not... He did not open the note and read it. 
and even if he did, I would have at that point just turned the video off. But I figured that meant we could uh, we could do the same with this lamp. This is the exact same kind of lamp that he did that with. But I guess we can't. Okay, never mind. That's uh, that's something different, I guess. I mean, obviously, uh, I suppose they probably changed that deliberately because they knew. I mean, I I, I would think they would change that deliberately. Since they'd know that uh, they, you know, if they show that in a pre-release thing, then somebody's going to, you know, anybody who is excited for the game and is watching the pre-release stuff is going to end up having it spoiled for them. I suppose they probably predicted that. So I guess they changed it. Okay, cool. Um, I guess that's actually kind of good then. Makes me feel a little bit less dumb for missing that, because I guess I didn't actually miss anything. Ha! Huh. Ha ha ha. Yeah, that's actually, um, one thing about this game that I am slightly nervous about is that, um, although I really enjoy Mist and Riven, and I really think that they are, um, some of the best point-and-click adventure games ever in terms of their ability to make puzzles that are logical, and like with this door here, it's logical that the flowing water would push the door in the, you know, opposite direction of wherever the thing you put down is so that it's trying to block the water and it's getting in the way and the water pushes it, you know? That makes perfect sense. Um, and, uh, you know, not only logical, but also making puzzles that actually feel like you're manipulating the world around you, whereas a lot of other puzzles, they'll have you, like, collect items and you use the items with other items or sometimes with stuff in the environment and their idea of a puzzle is simply, well, uh, you know, you have to you have to find the right, right way to combine everything. And that's, you know, that's fine, that works, and I've enjoyed plenty of point-and-click adventure games that do puzzles like those. God damn, the frame rate is just chugging in this particular area. I, I ended up turning the grass back on, because frankly, the game doesn't look half as nice without the grass on. But maybe I should, uh, I think, what did I turn it up to? Did I turn the grass, like, did I put a lot of grass on? Yeah, I put, I put it up to epic. Let's put it at medium, and maybe that'll be good. Alright, that's a little better. It still looks nice. Hopefully the frame rate will improve at some point. Jeez, alright. So anyway, uh, when we last left off, we were at this map here. We figured out where CW is, and we've kind of, in general, figured out everything, so we see the tower is, uh, tower is up there, CW, Town, Farley, we're at the Sphere, and then for some reason this one is red, I'm not sure what that is, I'm thinking that means the line is disconnected, it's also the only one that's not labeled, then there's Garage, Tunnels, Scrap, and Ramp, which we have not been to yet, um, but according to this map, if we keep going that way, we should get to wherever that red lamp is leading. Um, in fact, if that is the line that leads to... No. That is the line that leads to the tower. Then the very next one, I think that one, should lead to, uh, lead to the red. Could it possibly be this line on the ground? Not sure. Hmm. Um, before we go over there, though, let's actually take a look over here. Oh yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, but d despite the fact that uh, the Riven, that the the Mist games tend to have very like logically designed puzzles and puzzles that really feel like you're manipulating stuff in the world. Holy crap! Why? Please stop. Game, please. It really was not this bad in the first, like, the, in the first area, the town and everything. I have to assume it's because of the, all the plants or something? It's the only thing that's really different. There's, I mean, all the stuff, it's not like, it's not like each and every one of these is a physic object that, uh, that's, you know, bumping around when we walk into it or anything. Okay, yeah. See, like this. It's a perfect example. It's, this is just a gas thing 
that we have to turn, and we're going to end up doing something with that. Presumably to push gas out the other end. And so, you know, they're, they're good at designing their puzzles to make it look like you're just manipulating things in the world that makes sense being in the world, not doing a bunch of weird, crazy stuff that, uh... Okay, we probably have to get this door up. That doesn't really make sense outside of the context of it being a puzzle in an adventure game. Um, but despite that fact, both Myst and Riven have a couple puzzles in them that are just uh, too hard for me, basically, to uh, to really figure out on my own. And I always end up inevitably having to look up some type of tip or hint online. I'm hoping I won't have to do that for abduction. Um, I know that the uh, developers have said that they tried their best to make every single puzzle completely logical so that anybody could figure it out with enough thought. Uh, okay, so we can't manipulate that at all. All right. Uh, and, you know, so I'm basically just going to kind of hope that they uh, did a really good job this time around and were able to get it all uh Tip top and uh, stuff. Yeah. Also, uh, god damn. The, okay, I'm just gonna pause the video here for a second and cut this out because um, I'm gonna go uh, try and change my settings and get the frame rate to stop doing this because it's, it's crazy. So, yeah, one second. Okay, we're back and it seems to be working a lot better now. Um, the view distance oddly enough, seems to be the biggest factor in what was affecting the frame rate. Like, I can run all around here and, uh... Except when we're looking off towards the trees, because the trees are fucking frame rate killers for some reason. Except when we're looking off at the trees, it seems to be pretty decent in terms of, uh... In terms of the frame rate. Um... Seems to be... It, it, I, th I think this area just, just has a lot more stuff in it, especially with all the foliage and the trees and everything like that. Um, and that's what was causing the frame rate to dip down so much lower. When we were out in the other areas, they were slightly smaller and we couldn't see as far. And uh, the view distance, I guess, is kind of... Uh, I'm not exactly sure if that would be more of a processor or a GPU-intensive um, thing that's happening. I'm not sure. I guess it must be processor, because I know my GPU is more than powerful enough to handle this game, and my processor is a little bit old. Um, it still meets over the minimum requirements of this game, but I guess it's slightly towards the lower end, and uh, I, I guess view distance must be more of a processor-intensive thing. I've got pretty much all the settings on low, except for uh, water and uh, like foliage and the textures and the anti-aliasing, because as I mentioned in the very first episode, the anti-aliasing, if it's too low, like, the grass just looks horrible because it looks like a huge blurry mess, and I would rather have the grass off than have the grass on with the anti-aliasing low. Um, but, you know, higher than low, and everything looks smudgy, and of course that would hit the frame rate harder. Um, and I don't want to put the grass off because, uh, when the grass is, uh, you know, when it's on low, it's just off. There's just no grass at all. But then the world ends up looking a lot more dead and lifeless and unpleasant because there's just dirt everywhere. There's no grass. It doesn't look as nice. And, uh, it actually affects the atmosphere, not just, you know, it's, it's not just affecting the visual fidelity at that point. It's affecting the atmosphere as well. And, uh, the water and the textures are also on Epic because, uh, frankly, the textures below Epic don't actually look all that good. Like, there's a significant difference between Epic and High, unfortunately, in, in my opinion. And, uh, uh, the water, uh, water doesn't affect the frame rate that much in any game I've ever played. And both of them just, again, like, they look really nice, and I kind of just don't want to lower them down too much. But, seems with the very low view distance, um, there'll be a little bit of pop-in, unfortunately, like, right up there on that hill. As I'm walking forward and backwards, you can see those objects coming into into view. So that's not great, but uh, we'll have to put up with it, because uh, this is the most optimal settings that I can find. And yeah, I hope you all don't mind a little bit of pop-in. 
in exchange for having a stable frame rate in everything. So yeah, um, that thing over there with the uh, wench that we were turning uh, is connected to this wire, which is connected to this red line. And uh, that big power cord is connected from the map, and it also goes over to the same thing, which is this big train-looking thing. So let's see, what's, what's this all about? Oh boy. Oh no, look at this freaking missed puzzle here. Alright, on, off, fuel, empty. Alright, so this only has two positions. Okay, so that's fuel drain. And that's to add fuel to it? I would guess. Okay. Alright, and... Let me close this. Run prime start. Okay. Alright, so I think first we want to add fuel to it. Now this, um, obviously this could kind of go either way. Um, the lever here could be lifted up to make it go up, or you put it down to make it go down, but it also kind of looks like, um, when the lever's up, it sort of looks like it's blocking that pathway, uh, and that's where it started. It started in the up position, and I highly doubt that it would start in the, uh, correct position. So we're gonna put that back there, so I assume it's now blocking the fuel drain thing, and instead it will fill up with fuel once we pump fuel into it. And... I don't see anything else on the other side, except for some graffiti. Okay, nothing we can really interact with. Can't climb up here? Oh no, I didn't want to take a picture, damn it! Stop with the picture, freaking... Oh, my god. Okay, alright. We, uh, alright, let's flip that switch. Now let's go back here, down the ramp. Let's turn this. If this is even on, it might not be. Do we have to turn it on? Is there a button on it? No. Come on, walk. You just walked around the other side of the damn thing. Man, jeez. Okay. Let's turn this. Uh, glass must be full before and after delivery. Amount of purchase, yeah. Oh, okay, so that's not actually instructions on how to use this, I don't think. And I don't know if, uh... I think... I feel like the other way was correct. So let's do that. Alright. Cool. Let's run back over here. And now, let's try putting this on. Cool! It is full of fuel! I don't even think I need to turn that on to get it to do that. Alright. Prime. Ah, okay. Gotta hold it so it fills up. Okay, and... Alright. Seems to be going. Light is yellow. I'm gonna guess that's a good thing. So. Let's go check that map out. Let's see if it's changed. No, okay. So the line is still red. Um, I'm guessing this won't actually... Uh, I'm going to guess the, the map won't actually change. But uh, whatever we did here, it seems to have worked. Let me try something out just to test it. If we turn this off. Okay, so that turning it off turns off the 
priming uh, thing, it seems. Is it still running or not? I don't think so. Okay, let's, tr let's try this again. Let's not flip the off switch. All right. Yep, seems to be running. Seems to be running just fine. So, what that did is another question. Seems to be a generator probably built into that building there. That's what I would guess. Let's take a look inside these other train cars real quick though. No way to get inside this one, so probably nothing important in here. Some barrels. All right. Can't jump down. Right. Alright, that is a big thing that's uh, got wires connected to the edge of the dome. Sure, that makes sense. Wires hanging out of nowhere. Yeah. Alright. And this building. This. Okay, that leads up behind, like, Marlene's house. Or, far, I'm sorry, Farley's house. Ooh. It's a pretty nice painting. Anything else around here? Random cans? Nope. Okay. So, with the presumptive generator still running, let's go check out up here and see if that did anything. Oh, this, um, this should be the tower line, right? Why won't you open for me? All right. Okay, I guess that's not gonna work. Let's check this thing out. Ow, frame rate, please, 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 please. Oh my god. Alright, let's walk slowly now. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Nice view. Is that a door right there? that I completely missed? I think it might be. Oops. Hmm. I'll check that when I come back down. Alright, anything up here to actually manipulate? Doesn't seem like we can interact with anything. Pretty fancy looking though. This must be some kind of like alien thing. Maybe part of the planet that was already here that they left here for some reason when they put the town in or maybe oh you know what I bet this is for I bet this has something to do with those lasers because we can see where the blue laser is coming from and we can see the red laser up there perfectly from this spot I bet at some point when we do the Whatever puzzle is tied to those lasers, I bet we're going to have to come over here to sort of view them from afar. Hmm. Alright. And that... I still wish I knew what that did. I mean, I seem to have got it working, but... Without knowing what it did, doesn't help me much. Alright, nothing really over here. believe so. Let me, let me double check. Double, triple check. Oh, and I shouldn't forget, at some point I'm probably going to uh, end up getting this to turn around, since it has those wheels on it. 
specifically for presumably turning around. So I'll bet that has something to do with it. Alright. Um, let's check out both of these actually now that I realize. These are also slightly discolored. Nope, can't interact with those. And then this? No, okay, they're just different colored, uh, different colored, uh, whatchamacallits. For boards, that's the word. Okay, and that's, that's still a dead end, okay. I wonder what this area is for. There's a whole pathway to lead over there specifically and everything, there's nothing over there. That's uh, a little weird. Just another thing I'll have to keep in mind in case it becomes relevant later. Also, this thing isn't very loud. I don't like that. I, I should probably turn my my own volume up. I have it down really low uh, because I know when people watch Let's Plays, they want to hear the voice of the person talking over the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. So it's probably not preferable for me to turn the volume up, but I do now, at least, I do record my uh, audio and my, my uh, voice audio and gameplay audio separately, so that wouldn't be as much of a problem. Alright, now what's this lead to? Goddamn frame rate, please! Okay. That's simple enough. We have to find a code. We have to power it first, by the looks of it. Doesn't seem to be working. Power it first. And then put in the code, and then the door will unlock. Okay. That's uh, simple and straightforward enough. Then over here. Oh, well, we can get to the other side of this big thing. That might just be for the nice view. Alright, what? This big. Uh... I'm gonna take a look at the map when I go back that way and find out what that's that, what that thing is called. I have a feeling I, that I'll have a much easier time of all this if I can learn what every single one of the areas is called and remember them. Okay, and this is just another dead end. Alright, is this the only... Hmm. Okay. Oh, we see a lot more of these. Oh, these have got to be a puzzle. This looks like at the... Uh... At what, what's at the end of the Rhyme Age in Real Mist, um, when you've got that puzzle with the five stones that you have to, like, uh, recreate from the journal to make them the right size and color and everything like that. Um, this, clearly they're all the same, like, color, but they're different sizes and shapes. Each one's a little different. That one's uh, four like circular blocks stacked on top of each other with one much wider base block. This is one wide base block with a long uh, pole coming out the top. That's like, seems to be three or four blocks surrounding one thick middle one with another little one on top of it. That one is the same as that. The four blocks on top of one big wide one, and that one's the same as the one on the other end. We're probably going to have to recreate this at some point. So I'll remember this is here. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm not going to remember it's here. I'm going to take a note of it. Right down in my trusty handy dandy notebook. Alright, so uh, on the left, like, blocky there. Bigger block in the middle. Little blocks off on the side. Small block on the top. Uh, to the left there. A uh, wide base block with four blocks on top of it that thin out and get smaller as they go up. Then doing this with one hand. Oh, yeah. Then another one just like that in the middle. There you go. My art skills are terrible. 
Move to the right, please. Okay. And then the next one is just, uh... Yeah, just one base block with a long spiral. Or long spire, I mean, I should say. And then another one of the, uh, the big fat ones with the small ones surrounding it on the other end. Okay, cool. So I've got that. And I've got that just in time to end this episode, because unfortunately I'm all out of time. So when we come back, I'm going to go back to CW, actually. I have to talk to him, because we turned on that generator, and although it might not have immediately done anything, he did ask us to help him turn the power back on, so that very well may have been what we just did. And uh, also, I'm going to take another look at the map to uh, find out what this big thing in front of us is and try to basically memorize the whole area. So yeah, I will see you all next time. I hope you have enjoyed it. hope you all continue to enjoy it. Bye-bye.